education by pointing out that each of our two honorees has taken on a hard job that she did not need to do. And so give us a job. As you let us, as we leave here, give, what's our job? Give us a task. Give each of us a charge. I will. <laughs> um, what um, Janetta says about the days of segregation, what she says is true. And I grew up in the deeply, deeply, horribly segregated South, and I think I was angry every day. And um, I went to those schools, and I was certainly nurtured. However, um, from my point of view then, and I'm not kidding, I, I, something weird, I don't know what happened in my head, but I can tell you there is some fairy tale in that view of segregation because there were kids who were left behind. And they were the poorest amongst us. And those families, spawned by those children, many are in Washington, and they are still poor. And there really is no excuse for it. But in their poverty, they challenge us. And we are not going to have a whole and emotionally peaceful city until we deal with it. Mm -hmm. And so I say that those of us who have been blessed must not get tired, must not become fatigued, must not become disinterested. We must confront these children and their school system and our role in this city head on. And we must do it through respect and love. I want to see our DCPS buses clogging up the roads by the Smithsonian every day. I want to see field trips mm -hmm. in every curriculum, in every school, for every child. Mm -hmm. And I want every child to feel welcome in the process of doing it. And I want every child to know that if he struggles at home, that school is home. Mm -hmm. okay. And we, as adults, cannot say, oh man, do, Deontay brought so many, he brings so many problems to school. I mean, I can't teach like that. All these problems all around me, no, no. Deontay is still our responsibility and he must be loved, he must be supported, he must be nurtured. And it is all possible, I have yet to meet and an educable child. But you met some teachers who don't teach. Uh, and, and, and yes, but there are teachers who don't teach. And we have to understand that in Washington, uh, particularly in our black community, we hate change. It is, we don't like change. And change is really hard. I remember when there were Latinos coming into the system. And I can remember talking to superintendent about it, you know. Uh-uh. You know, they have every right to go to public schools. They have every right to apply for jobs and compete for jobs. And we have to, ex there are things we have to accept going forward. Okay. And so, and, but, and so we can't let those things make us so angry that we can't go forward. So I ask each of you in this room, white and black, to examine your anger. Okay? <clears throat> After you do that, I challenge each of you to make some hardcore action. You, as an individual, make some hardcore action. Okay? And whether it is uh, putting yourself out there 
and adopting a family that you don't even know, whose background is completely different from yours, and accepting that family as equal, and giving that family all the tools of advocacy that you gave your children, and your brothers, and your sisters. Do that. And each family will be lifted from poverty faster than any other kind of program you could possibly know. And that's why big sisters and big brothers work so well. It's that one-on-one -on -one thing. It's that human connection. And eventually, eventually, you know what? The members of that family and the members of your family, they settle down. Hmm? And they realize that the aspirations are the same. Okay? But we have a responsibility for helping them make their aspirations possible. We really, really do. Those of you who work for the government or know people that do, watch closely. Watch closely the programs. Watch closely. And lobby for those that are going to help advance this. Okay? So, I mean, I say, seize your city and seize the people in it. Step back, think, and then embrace them and and become advocates for them. That's all I have.